Okay, scholars, 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 scholars. Let's see if we can talk about uh, this colonization. It's sort of like the what really happens by the 1780s, and that's with um, primarily the work of Father Sarah and Governor Neve, uh, both having opposite sort of visions of how best to be Christians to the, uh, you know, this Spanish Christian vision, uh, how to implement it. So uh, Sarah, as we talked about last time, picks up on, on, on the old ideas, the deep history, and, and especially working off of that Jesuit missionary model of creating mission stations where you gather all the Indians in, and the, the, the priest, the, uh, the padre, is like padre means is a father figure so it's very patriarchal and what is supposed to characterize a mission is love it's a family love where everybody's taking care of everybody okay everybody's got these mutual responsibilities and that's the goal all right uh governor neve arrives and he and sarah you know come at each other because governor neve is a an enlightenment figure. He's more like the guys that we have as the founding fathers over in uh, on the East Coast. They they are inspired by ideas of of what we now call capitalism, a type of land labor relationship in which freedom means the ownership of land and and uh, which is also what Sarah believed too. But Sarah. This idea that we need to get people to a land labor relationship and that that when they're in this being paid for their labor and they own their own land and they go that that becomes the ideal of a free person. And that's much more like the way our society thinks today is. So Neve is sort of more like us in our modern ways of thinking. And and uh, Sarah really sort of looks backward into older ways of thinking. Neither of these are are discipline, you know, there's, they still work together, but, but sadly, Sarah ha was a pugnacious sort of uh, saint, and uh, uh, he and Neve didn't get along. But so we're going to focus on Neve here, and what Neve's goals were, and also see him as the best of the Spanish governors. He was, he was a man of vision, and he is the one who brings in pueblos. We want to talk about pueblos. And then he sort of sees the big picture of California and charts a course for it that uh, ultimately doesn't work out because of the Mexican War of Independence that's going to happen later after he leaves. But uh, Neve is the one who sort of has the bigger picture. Sarah does this great work, of, uh, but he dies in 1784. Neve will continue on and move to create and envision something larger, which could have been, uh, a, you know, a re really a working model. So let's, let's talk about what Neve's vision was. Okay, so first off is, is you have a, a presidio and a mission in San Francisco. That's, that's very important for him. And with these missions, he desires, as we talked about last time, the secularization. These missions would be turned into churches, okay? But the missions, uh, the missionaries would continue to be in California. His vision was is for the missionaries to move into the interior and start to create missions here. Missions are supposed to be temporary institutions. So get the missionaries moving out. So he wants the missionaries to move out. And he wants to establish uh, a new presidio here in Santa Barbara, and Santa Barbara is going to be organized uh, in its Indian relations by Neve. And the mission is not a mission doesn't of Santa Barbara doesn't come till later. And so it's it's really it's Neve's vision of how to uh, work with Indians that we best see in Santa Barbara, and then the creation of a town, a pueblo, which is the ultimate goals of the Spanish was to create a all these pueblos. The Indians are supposed to have pueblos. Everybody's supposed to live together in pueblos. And so the actual founding of Los Angeles is sort of the ideal of what California is supposed to be, this multiracial, integrated pueblo, uh, and that these pueblos like Los Angeles would be up and down and throughout California, and they would help everyone 
Indians, immigrants, everyone to, to flourish, okay? Full-fledged colonization vision. So, so LA is supposed to be the, the best model. San Jose uh, was a start at this, but San Jose's a little, didn't work out as well as, as uh, it could have hoped. And some things aren't established yet when San Jose gets established. But then Santa Barbara, San Jose, and Los Angeles. These are Neve's great projects. And all these missions are to be, you know, later the missionary movement is supposed to move to the interior and the missions would then become part of, of the uh, church system of the state. They would actually be a, a church if you go, go to Los Angeles, the old Pueblo, there's the old church that's right there on the square. That's the ideal, is the Pueblo with the square, the plaza in the middle with the church in the plaza. And what really sort of causes a lot of angst for uh, the Spanish and for Neve is that the Anza colonization, the, you know, the idea that you could create colonization across the... Uh, um, Colorado River and then come up into here and then go on up the coast that proves to be really erratic and hard to do because of the deserts but then there's also the uh, the Yuma Indians along the Colorado River uh, revolt against two missions that are out here and so um, that really puts a sort of sand into the wheels of the Spanish colonization is what goes on in Yuma but what we're going to focus on are, again, these intentions, and certainly uh, the intentions that a, 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 a very diverse, very interesting, very uh, aspirational society of Pueblos would be created in uh, California that would make it a good society, run well. Okay. So, uh, and by the way, there's the, there's the statue of of Neve, that's, these are some students of mine in, in, in the, the Pueblo of Los Angeles. Um, go to the Pueblo, yeah, it's a good place to go, and uh, we can't take a field trip there, but yeah, it's a very interesting place, just above you, the train station, so take the train, very pleasant train trips in California. Go take the train to Union Station, and then you walk out of Union Station up the hill, because Los Angeles is built on this high ground above the river, uh, so that the flooding and stuff doesn't mess it up. Now. The, um, uh, yeah, so Neve is uh, the guy we want to sort of focus on here and the Pueblos. Let's uh, give, uh, as always, there's background to this. The guy in California who is Neve is always working for someone in Mexico. Remember what we said. Got to think in terms of that we're Mexicans. Westward movement did not settle California. California is settled from the south. It's settled by Mexico. And so our roots, and we should sort of like feel this, this is our, our roots are in Mexico, and we should have this great empathy and affinity with uh, Mexico City especially, and then the coastal cities, especially of San Blas, which is the, the uh, naval base that was based, that all colonization was based off of in uh, California because the land colonization was hard to do. But Neve was actually part of uh, both sides. The, the uh, ships are going up and down the coast, largely paid for by the uh, uh, Pius Fund, and then this Anza movement to come in. And here's, here's the Anza. You'll see these trails. It's a National Historic Trail for Anza. And Anza comes up and shoots in this way. Okay, see there's number three. Number three is here. Anza brings his groups in up to the Gila River, crosses over, and then uh, up, up, he goes to, not San Diego, but the, the topography takes you into Mission San Gabriel and then shoots you up. And this is organized largely out of, of, a, of a viceroy named Bucarelli. Okay, so our, we had our 1640s viceroy that sent Cabrillo was Mendoza. 1600 Viceroy that sent Viscano and Monterey and all that sort of stuff we talked about, the Count of Monterey, and then that was the Viceroy. And then, um, and then with the, uh, the settlement by Neve and when things really get going in California, it's Bucarelli. Uh, Bucarelli is very supportive of Sarah, very supportive of Neve. And then there's also a guy, Delacroix. Um, but this is a, 
you don't need to remember the names of Delacroix and you don't really need to remember Bucarelli, but the person we're talking about today, Neve, you need to know Governor Philippe Neve and uh, um, we will talk about him as a, as a model and use him as a model and, and examples of him as a, from him as a model for this Pax Hispanica in California at its best, okay, before the Mexican independence happens. Uh, the uh, colonization is, is tied to, uh, you know, uh, a belief, which is very true, is, is that what's, the California is a dysfunctional society. And how are you dysfunctional? Well, it's dysfunctional because A, you've sent missionaries there who are priests and they're celibate, okay? Uh, you know, and then you send soldiers and stuff up there. That's good. You, you've housed these presidios with soldiers. Soldiers are marrying into the population and they're creating families and that sort of stuff. But you really do need a program that sends families to, that's, that's what good colonization is. And this is where the British excel over everyone else in, America, in the United States, North American history, is that, is that the British sent over all these Puritan families and that sort of stuff, and, and then the Quakers. And there's a lot of family stuff that goes on on the East Coast. Well, this is the family time of, of California. It's like, <laughs> hey, we can't, we got plenty of priests, we got plenty of celibate so, or soldiers that are, you know, we're telling to be celibate, they're not, but they're not. Uh, what we need is families, and so we need to import families, and this is where, what kind of families are going to come? Well, rich people are not going to leave Mexico and go to, to live in California because there's no money there. Okay, there's no gold rust, there's no, you know, the rich don't think they're going to make any money in California. The super poor, uh, you know, the really what we would call the homeless or the, the real degraded poor, the, those folks are, tend to be very conservative and it's a real hard issue. So what you need is sort of what we would call lower middle class, you know, people who don't have land and want their renter class, they've got families and they want to move. And those folks are highly, in Mexico, highly mixed race, okay? This is the term Mexico and Mexican. It's not an, a specific ex, uh, ethnic group. It pulls from all over sources. So they're, there are people who we would call blacks. There are people who are, are uh, uh, his, you know, all this uh, Hispanics. Uh, there's just uh, Indians. Uh, they've, they've become, over the, over the generations since the initial founding, there's Filipinos that are involved in this because the Philippine connection. Uh, there's just a lot of mixed blood of a lot of diverse peoples that come together in Mexico. And Mexico is this great sort of melting pot in that way. And so, so uh, these are the folks that are, that are in need of land, they don't own land, and wanna come up. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna offer them free land. And that's, that's the, the big program here. And so uh, Anza is the first person to bring a group of people, and he's like the Moses of California history. He brings this bunch. And Anza doesn't stay. Anza's not really important for California history uh, other than he brings this bunch. And they settle, uh, you know, he's the one who found San Francisco and gets it going. But San Francisco is a presidio, like we said, and then the mission is going to come in there. But it's Anza's lieutenant, Moraga, whose job it is with this other, with missionaries and stuff, is to settle a... Pueblo and this there's a river down here called the Rio de Guadalupe and that's where they're going to settle and they settle the first Pueblo so you have missions you know and they're supposed to be temporary presidios which are little chess pieces on on uh, the great global you know board of, of geopolitics and then and 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 California presidios are just like you know they, they can't defend themselves. They're really sort of worthless other than just simply chess pieces. And then finally, Pueblos. So missions and then presidios and Pueblos. And Pueblos is the stability. Pueblos is the future. Pueblos are the vision. So the first one is San Jose. And you, uh, the idea of a Pueblo is that it has a church. Out of the church will be the, a source of education, of, of moral enrichment, everything else like that. You'll have town plots. 
uh, in which everyone's gathered together, usually in a, in a, in a, with a plaza in the middle. And I'm not sure why San, uh, San Jose's uh, organized like this, but uh, usually with a plaza in the middle. And then uh, farmlands are given outside. So you get a town lot for your house and then farmlands outside. And the idea is you're supposed to help each other do the harvest and sort of run your, your farmlands outside, but you all gather in the middle, go to church, you have education. And then with that, you have a, a fair amount of popular sovereignty. So you have a alcalde, which is a, a mayor, a locally elected out of the, out of the uh, group. And then also you have a, a council, you know, a city council type of thing. So, so uh, this is a, I mean, you know, this is, this is, you know, we're, the king isn't oppressing this type of thing. It's just supposed to help people flourish. And especially they get private ownership of land and they get this sort of communal development. So this gets started up on San Jose, but um, in San Jose, but uh, it really, you know, well, here's another picture. This area of San, uh, where San Jose is founded is down here. And this is, as you can see, is a, uh, it's got a lot of wetlands, a lot of, a lot of, you know, this is a big marsh at the bottom of the uh, San Francisco Bay. And then a new mission is created up here where Fremont is up. You see coming with this creek coming out of that. But, but San Jose was founded down here. And this is uh, part of the marshland. And then there's another mission, Santa Clara. So you go to San Jose today and, you know, you sort of think of the whole thing in San Jose. Uh, Santa Clara University has the Santa Clara mission and then up by Fremont is the, uh, the San Jose mission. But the town of San Jose, the Pueblo, was created down here. And it was, the, you know, it's a great farmland. It's going to be, you know, this big open flat space. This is going to be a place we can develop farms and, uh, you know, the people are going to work these farms. Same is true of Los Angeles Basin. Big, open, flatland, well watered, because you got these, these rivers here. Here's the Los Angeles, here's the San Gabriel River, here's, and, and they, they flood a lot. They're weird California rivers, of course. There's a lot of desert, but, but you, can, you can depend uh, that you're going to get water uh, down here in this flatland. And so, uh, the mission at San Gabriel is one of the early ones established. Later on, they're going to establish this one in San Fernando Valley. This is the San Fernando Valley here, where the river goes up and turns the corner into San Fernando Valley. And you're going to later get Mission San Fernando Rey up there. But notice, this is all a big old area with only one mission. And this mission became a very big one and very important one. But uh, it's, it covers a lot of territory and the town of Los Angeles and here again the Presidio is separated from the mission and also the Pueblo is separated from the mission so the Pueblo is going to be right there okay it's up on some high ground above that above that uh, river um, and one of the things that by the time you get to Los Angeles getting founded you have this this what's called the Regulamento which is a uh, here's what it, it was designated clearly what the uh, colonists are going to get. And they're going to get a house lot and a farm lot. They're going to get two mares, two oxen, two cows, two goats, two sheep, two horses, and a mule. They're going to get a plow, a musket, seed, <laughs> sorry, the seed, and a leather shield because they're, everybody's part of the militia. And then look at this. They're going to get paid. For two years, they're gonna, and this is Spanish dollars, they're getting paid. And for three years, they get paid. So, so this is actually to uh, jumpstart. This is a full-on plan. And Neve is coordinating most of this. A full-on plan to set up two Pueblos in California, San Jose, Los Angeles. By the time he gets to Los Angeles, 1782, he's really got the plan sort of figured out. It's actually Im being implemented that we will take these people who are coming in and a new set of... of uh, what are called pobladores, are, are brought in, and they are, uh, uh, as you, the assignment had you read there, they're a very interesting mixed bunch of people who were brought up by land, and then they're added to by people coming in from the sea and stuff like that. And so, 
uh, we begin what we call full-on colonization. And so you have this grand plan. Now, for the not a Pueblo, so it's a little different, but was Santa Barbara. And in Santa Barbara, um, which is, remember, right here, okay? So you have this big open green space here with the Los Angeles, big open green space there with San Jose, and then this little tight spot there. And that's, uh, it's, it's not real promising for a, uh, uh, you know, a Pueblo with, you know, farming, but it is very promising. They wanted a Presidio on the Spanish, the channel. You got a Presidio in San Francisco, Presidio in Monterey, Presidio in San Diego, and they wanted this Santa Barbara channel here, which is the main route sort of into Southern California, come up here and sail in, is they wanted a Presidio there. Just, you know, four Presidios. And so Santa Barbara is a Presidio town. But as with Los Angeles, Neve is involved, and Neve is actually on site, and he's actually giving out gifts to Indians, creating good relations. There's a, there's a ancient Indian populations here. There's a place called Burton Mound down by the coast. I think the, I forget the name of the, the, the little the, uh, Indian name for the village that was there, but they have a Yanolani Street. If you're by this railroad station in Santa Barbara, you look for this Yanolani Street. And that's the anglicized name of a chief that lived there at the time of Neve, who, you know, negotiates with Neve. And it's a land labor negotiation. It's a, it's, we're not putting you in a mission, chief, where you join in with us and help us join in the project of creating this Presidio town. And we will pay you and you will be participating in, a, in what is a free relationship you see, this is Indian freedom, and we're all, and so the, uh, the problems of, of uh, missionary diseases and what was perceived as sort of, uh, of, of this long period of taking away Indian freedom and turning him into a childlike status, we're not going to do that. We're, we're not doing the patriarchal system. It's, let's jump right in. We'll pay you to help us build the Presidio. And so Indians help build the Presidio, and it works together, and it works pretty well. Uh, Yanilani and... Uh, and the Presidio development uh, did, did uh, as best as we can, we can hope, I suppose. So, so in the sense that uh, we have a, uh, not only a colonization going on with families, especially the creation of Pueblos, we have a whole new idea of Indian relationships. And these Indian relationships are going to be flourishing, land labor. Now, Neve is a Christian, and so he, you know, he's very open and very interested in, in helping Indians and missionaries and Christ, you know, Christianize. But it's not going to be the sort of forced, concentrated situation of a mission. It's not that, that intense type of neophyte status, and then you go through that and move on up. It's simply you're going to sort of join in with the Christian Pueblo you're going to join in with a Christian Presidio. There's going to be a chapel there. There's going to be, and so it's hopefully a much better relationship. Now, the Indians uh, are missionized. There's a, a mission Santa Barbara built a few years later, which will, will take in a lot of missions, but, uh, Indians. But then the, mission, the Indians also live like they did in, in general. They, they could join or not join if they wanted to. They're not being forced to join the later mission. Okay, so we just sort of ran through some information here to get you started. There's some stuff in the uh, um, uh, reading assignment. Uh, optimistic, uh, you, know, you know, look at Governor Neve as uh, uh, he and Sarah are both very, are founders really of California's uh, institutional structure under Spain. And uh, Sarah has a, a much sort of more narrow vision uh, it, it, because it's so narrowly focused on sort of the spiritual and, and stuff. And, and so Neves is a larger vision, which is more focused on the Pueblo and, and actual, you know, what we would call Spanish civilization. And so it's, it's both optimistic. They're both looking out for the Indians. The goal is that the Indians will be free citizens and participating in society. And, uh, and both are hoping for the place to flourish. Anza is important as sort of this person who initially brings a sort of Moses-like bunch of settlers in, but Los Angeles is settled by a different mi migration. And then there is this coastal work going on 
that uh, I'm not really talking about here with this, keeping these videos short. All right, so take care, and I will, uh, we'll talk more about this at the Zoom, and we can maybe ask some, if you have questions, let me know.